G'day and welcome back. In this quick little video, I'm going to show you how to create your very own earthquake scenario and I'm going to get started right now. So for an earthquake, we need a backdrop somewhere where things might fall over. And obviously for me, a city is probably the easy choice to go from. And normally what falls over or what we think of falling over is nice tall buildings. Got a building here. And the really cool thing about this sprite is that actually there's quite a lot of different characters available. I'm actually going to choose this one because it's the simplest one and we'll go from there. Okay, so we've got this building here and actually it doesn't really match our city. I'm going to show you a quick trick. I'm actually going to change the color of the city building to match the background. And actually I also want to change the windows to be a bit more yellow. How I can do this is by selecting one, hold down the shift key, and then select the rest as well. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm gonna change that to a bit of a yellow color over here. Hopefully I can find there that matches as well. Awesome, it looks like it fits in and I'm happy with that as well. We'll just make this a bit darker and that cityscape should fit in. Awesome, so what I wanna do now is make this building shake from left to right and then I also want to make it collapse. So how I'm going to do that, first of all, I'm going to change the name to one, just so it helps out a bit later. I'm going to duplicate this twice and I'm going to shake to the left. I'm actually going to select everything, shake to the left and shake to the right. Pretty straightforward, I think. And then when I go back to, well, actually, no, I need to consider how it's going to actually fall to the ground. So I'm going to duplicate again. I'll bring this down. And a falling building might fall just like this. And I'll duplicate again, and it might go a bit smaller again. And I'll duplicate again. I'll do this three or four times so that I can have a bit of a slow fall rather than it falling too quickly. And you'll see why at the end. So I'm gonna make this building nice and short. And we're at this stage here. I might actually do some, control Z. I might say copy, Control V, and I might say actually part of the building fell off. And I'm just going to create a small little slither that looks like that. And then I'm going to we'll move my head over there, duplicate again. And this one down here, I might say, oh, it's even smaller this time. Drag this down a bit more. We might have a, some windows falling off down here. Ooh. I'm going to just delete Control X, Control V. Won't let me move them. I will move these windows. There we go. I'm going to say they fell down to the ground. And I'm going to add another black component over here. And I'm going to do one more just for good luck. Because, you know, 10 is, 10 is a nice number. And we'll go here. I'm just going to make everything a bit smaller and flatter. Okay. Now I'm going to go to our code. And I am going to... Actually, I need an event. I need to something to trigger this. And I might even just say... Why don't I press the space button for now? We can change this later, but for now, I'm just gonna say when we click on the space button. Now, if you recall, I numbered them one to 10, so that should make it actually really easy. If you don't number them, it actually makes it a bit harder. So the first thing we wanna do is switch to our costume one, because that's our first costume, and this will allow us to change it up every time. One, two, three, and that should trigger it to go left and right. The problem is that it happens so quickly that we can't see. So what we really need is a control and we need a bit of a pause in between. And after a bit of practicing, I know that about 0.2 of a second is a pretty good pause for a, an earthquake. We do, if we do one second, it's a bit too quick. All right, so if I press space, there we go. It's going left and right. Obviously the building is gonna shake a few times before it collapses or I hope it does especially if it's been engineered well. So if I do a repeat 10 times, shakes quite a few times, and that's awesome. That's what we wanna see. All right, the other thing I might actually add is I notice it goes from left to right. I actually wanted to bypass the center. So I'm gonna say uh, switch between uh, costume two and costume three. I wanted to actually switch back to costume, sorry, one. And that way it'll be a bit more realistic in between. If we see that, I think that's better as well. 
Okay, after it does this 10 times, I want it to fall to the ground. So I'm gonna go looks, and I'm gonna go to costume, and this is where I just need to add in the rest of the costumes from four down to 10. So I should have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. A matter of changing the costume numbers. So four, five, I, sh I could go next costume, but I just like to control each one. Uh, but you can definitely experiment with using next costume as well. And nine, and don't forget, we still want a, a, a bit of a gap in between. So I'm gonna go for a 0.2. I'm gonna make a few copies of this. I can drag it straight in. There we go. No, what was it? There we go. Uh, there are we? Yeah, there we go. Drag them all in. And hopefully this looks like a an earthquake. 0 0.2. All right, are we ready for the final moment? It's a nice long code. I'm sure we could make this simpler. Let's see how we go. And time for it to start falling. And there we go. Collapse to the ground. Hope you enjoyed this video. Can you make your very own building collapse in Scratch? Good luck. Let me know how you go. If you have any questions, just ask in the comments below.